Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming. In this video, I'll be going into detail about the LEGO terrain I used for a battle report video for the game of Stargrave, specifically the first scenario for the Last Prospector supplement for the sci-fi miniature skirmish game. And I'll also be showing the LEGO figures I used and discuss some of the kit bashing I did to create some of them. If you're watching my battle videos, it's not necessary to watch this video, you won't miss anything as far as gameplay goes, but I thought that some viewers might find it interesting whether they're into Stargrave or just into LEGO. So let's get to the bricks and blocks of this terrain and miniatures video. For my table setup for the bar fight scenario, Almost everything on the table is taken from the LEGO sets Dark Trooper Attack, Trouble on Tatooine, the Armorer's Mandalorian Forge, and two sets of Boba Fett's Throne Room, which I purchased on sale at Costco. My family built one of these together in lieu of a puzzle, and my kids helped me create most of the scattered terrain on the table with the pieces from the second set. The only things on the battlefield that aren't from any of these sets are the rocky pillars, which are mega block pieces, and the off-brand base plates covering the tabletop. Over here, I used the palace's tower and turrets to create a main entrance, and built a guard station and area to check in large weapons and combat armor, and an alarm tower that goes off in case trouble erupts. Over here, there's a repair shop, basically just the forge built as intended, and I used parts of the Tatooine speeder bike to be some machinery. In the other corner, I've used what should be behind Boba Fett's throne to create an area behind a table. And there's little tables and chairs. My daughter actually came up with the idea for these designs, and they're littered across the bar. My daughter also built what she calls the snake bar. She said a skilled bartender works here and is able to slide drinks perfectly down this to the patrons but inside the table is a secret hatch that reveals a snake-filled tomb where unruly patrons are put. Over here, I've used the Dark Trooper hallway to be the doorway and elevator entrance from the docking bay. There's a little poker table with some chips on it, and this decorative artwork is the Tatooine Ballista, slightly modified and stood on end. And there's a little ambiance lighting here, also from the Tatooine set. Then we have the main restaurant and kitchen area, a bar with a small grill and a hood, a large grill in the middle, a little storage room, and a small bar over here. And my son built this. He didn't even know what my daughter and I were doing with our parts, but I thought it kind of looked like a brick oven. So I put it here so that staff could put the pizza in on one side, and it can then be removed by wait staff on the other side. Over here is the ventilation system to keep the air fresh and the emergency exit with turrets, of course. And nearly half the table down here is the concert area. The stage is the base of the Dark Trooper set, with a few pieces of Boba's Palace added. This short bar here is the base piece for the piece in the back corner, and next to it are a little sink area and rotisserie from that set. Here we have Boba's actual throne, built as directed, and next to it a little cushy booth, and a second booth that's built as directed. And this covered bar here is the piece that's supposed to go over Boba's throne. And I used the Tusken Raider hut to be a lounging booth. For the minifigures that make up my crews, I'll highlight some of the more interesting things about them. Most of them are LEGO Star Wars figures, and everything I'm using is authentic LEGO except for some of the capes. Starting with the mercenaries, Captain Iru and Sergeant Ruga get their names from a scene in the Super Nintendo game Breath of Fire. There's some monsters named Rugas, and they say Iru Iru at one point. And Iru seemed like a good name for a Tusken Raider. His body is that of Paz Vizsla, 
as seen in the Mandalorian TV show and the Lego set The Mandalorian Forge. His cape is from a Mandalorian battle pack, and I designed the rapid fire slash flamethrower he carries. He's a biomorph that's supposed to be ridiculously strong, hence his ability to fling opponents. Sergeant Ruga, a veteran, uses a body I got at a bricks and minifigures store, combined with a rebel pilot head and armor and helmet from a series 13 minifigure, the Galaxy Trooper. And since he uses fling but doesn't have the strength of Iru, he has a throwing device integrated into his armor, which is how he thematically uses the power. And instead of showing him with his deck and picks, this flinging tool also helps him tear into physical loot and short circuit data locks to open them. He has a pistol integrated into his armor that I'm not representing, and his integrated hand weapon is strapped to his back. And if he ends up without combat armor, he still has his flinging device, and an off-brand small cape. They've got some non-Star Wars aliens in their crew, one from the 2009 Space Police sets, and two that are from the individual minifigure bags, and these two are the informant and his bodyguard that show up in my bar fight scenario. A few clone troopers with non-white paint jobs will show up as ex-pirates. This Pathfinder has an indoor trooper body with random other pieces. His weapon is from the Dark Trooper attack set, I thought these looked much better to represent shotguns than the bowcaster things I made for my previous Stargrave campaign. This robot uses an at, -AT driver body, and no I don't say at-at, with an assortment of other parts. They've got the R2-Q2 astromech droid, and their striker is a Thelan dancer from the Boba Fett's palace set, just with a different wig. And Iru's team's ship is called the Iron Golem, also named from Breath of Fire for the giant robot the party controls at one point in the game. My other crew is led by Captain Smata, an aristocrat. His body is Bib Fortuna's from the Boba Fett palace set. His face is a Nimodian face, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, that I found at a bricks and minifigures shop. His cape is three generic capes that I use to make kind of fancy robes. His staff is a spear with the business end cut off with a lightsaber handle attached. His crown thing is actually the neck piece from a Clatoonian Raider with a transparent blue stud place on top. And I had to get the stud just right to actually clip it to the little bit of the head top that stuck out. Smata is named after a very minor character that appears in one episode of the Bucky O'Hare TV show, a toad captain that wears an overly decorative military outfit. His first mate is Blinky, an investigator, named after Bucky O'Hare's android crew member. The model I'm using for him is the Mandalorian minifigure, but with a Cyclops head and Lando Calrissian's helmet from an old desert skiff set. He's got a cape from the Mandalorian battle pack, and I made kind of a custom blaster that counts as a flamethrower. And I'm saying he can use his eye to perform telekinetic abilities with the transport, bait and switch, and the new smash and grab powers. This crew consists of a sniper figure that's wearing the same suit that Jin Erso disguises herself in during Rogue One, and he has a random head and hairpiece. This was originally going to be the figure I used for the first mate, and I would have named him Deadeye from Bucky O'Hare. They have some Clatoonian Raiders from my ATST set, a Weequay guard and Gamorian from Boba Fett's palace, Kathaba from the previously mentioned Desert Skiff set. The Striker is a random figure I bought at Bricks and Minifigures with a helmet from the Mandalorian battle pack and a chainsaw lightsaber weapon. And their Pathfinder was kitbashed from a few things, a random body and legs from Bricks and Minifigures, a shoulder pad from a Clatoonian Raider, a head from the Lego Nexo Knights, with horns from some Ninjago bad guys, and his shotgun is just a Lego rifle that I've cut down with a razor knife. Captain Smata's ship is called the Negator, named after the Bucky O'Hare enemy, Alan Negator. Be sure to check out my last Prospector campaign battle videos to watch these crews in action on my Lego battlefield. And let me know in the comments what you think of this video, and if you'd like to see me do more discussions on terrain and figures in the future. I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, thanks for watching and play well.